What's in more breakers? No policies here. And today I am here with our season eight CSML draft for your Beijing BEM. I'm very hype. I don't know why, because I wasn't that hype uh, a few uh, seconds ago, but now I am. So anyway, this season, um, I don't know if I can say it's better than last season. It's definitely more interesting, but let's roll into it. Anyway, this time around, I will say that I don't know if I can say I really got sniped less because I kind of got sniped more, but then again, I think I got sniped probably about the same as last season and around the same times too. Um, but for now, let's just get right into it. Um, yeah, season eight. We pretty much just finished season seven about, I want to say, a month ago. So, pretty soon after. And, uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So, your Beijing Behems. Anyway, uh, the draft format went something like A1, A2, B1, B2, B3, C3 picks. Two D picks and two E picks. So no more F tier, which is a godsend because F tier was pretty much just people picking the bottom bottom of the barrel. Um, I'm much happier that we have a third C pick because I love C tier. It has ama oh, just amazing mods in general. Really fun to pick from, and honestly, I'm really excited to share my draft. So anyway, let's get right into it. Um, our first A1 pick. Now, I was considering getting another Mon first, because I didn't think this one would be taken for, or just really at all. But, that's alright. So, I decided to take this thing because the Mon that I was looking for being Tapu Koko was already taken. It wasn't really, it was kind of in the back of my mind. I already had my draft plan figured out. Um, I didn't think I would get the Mon, but if I did... On the off chance that I did, and it was available, then I was like, you know what, we might go for it. But it didn't last, so you know, I was like, okay, that's fine. We're going to go for the one, the only, Dragonite. Oh, Chaos the Dragonite. Uh, it is our Z-Move user. A1 pick. I don't regret this at all. I wanted this thing since, pretty much ever since I realized that it probably wouldn't make playoffs in Season 7. And I was like... Why I need? I really want to start making my next team. Thinking Garchomp, but that was like for a split second at the beginning of my draft planning. I wanted this thing probably since March is when I started liking this. Uh, I mean, really kind of solidifying it. I've always liked Dragonite. It's kind of like one of the pseudos that it's so kind of just bland. But I like it for the fact that it just it's so underrated in draft league format. Like. I don't remember the last time someone drafted a Dragonite. Because Dragonite's just so underrated. I love Dragonite. I love it, I love it, I love it. Because it's just, it's just really underrated. It is pretty slow. Base 80 speed isn't the best speed in the world. It's kind of like, eh, I wish we, it was a little bit faster, you know. Not the fastest mod in the world. But it is not slow. It does have speed boosting abilities and agility and Dragon Dance. So that's a thing. Gets priority, really good priority, extreme speed, has very good stats all around, very bulky, uh, has very high attack stat, 134, and a decent special attack stat in 100, and has one of the best abilities in the game being multi-scale, in my opinion, because you bring this thing in, it can live really any hit, even four times uh, weakness of an ice weakness, from a either non-stab or a low power ice type. We do have to be careful though because there may be just some random HP ices flying about. That might be annoying, but it gets so much coverage. Uh, having access to uh, defog is one. It's actually really interesting because it gets defog. It does get, of course, extreme speed, earthquake, fire punch, dragon claw, uh, hurricane, fly with uh, flying MZ, uh, outrage, Awesome there. Uh, reliable recovery in Roost, which is amazing, so it can be run more bulkily variant. And it gets all the elemental punches. Uh, 
and gets pretty much all the elemental moves too, like Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower in that regard. Fire Blast too, and it gets a lot of those moves um, in the bigger variant too, being Blizzard, Fire Blast, and Thunder. And gets interesting, just gets interesting moves. It gets Dragon Tail uh, to phase out Mons. Um, honestly, it's so versatile. You, you just don't know what's, what's coming with this thing. It, you just don't. And that's really all I have to say. It's just versatile, and I'm going to leave it at that, because I don't want to give up away any kind of set or anything like that, but Z-Move just make this thing that much better, because you can run really any Z-Move, and it will be good. So, And it doesn't really need an item, honestly, because you can run, like, so many items with this thing, like Life Orb, Leftovers, Weakness Policy, Z-Move, uh... Band, Scarf, there's just a lot of things you can run, so that's really going to be it. However, um, since I didn't get Tapu Koko, which I didn't think I would, I was kind of like, that was, that's, I say, I'm saying that a lot, I really didn't want Tapu Koko all that much, it was kind of like on the back burners, kind of just as a mod, I didn't expect to get it, if I did, I was like, okay, we'll pick it up, um, but I, I'm not unhappy with getting this mod at all, um, you're just picking up a lot of mods that you don't normally see in Draft League format. Um, just because, just, you know, you don't see it too often, so, uh, you wouldn't expect to see it. So, anyway, uh, yeah, that's going to be Raikou, Diego the Raikou, be from Ice Age, I think, that's where I got that from. Anyway, might wonder why it's shiny in the picture, and that is because this means that you can run Aurasphere without worrying of your opponent knowing if you're running Aurasphere, or if you're running, say something else. So, well, you may be like, well, Aura Sphere's not that good of a move, you're not going to be running it every week. Well, running Shiny ensures that my opponent does not know if I'm running Aura Sphere or not. If I run regular Raikou, they automatically know that I'm not going to be running Aura Sphere, which is something that I don't really want. Having that versatility there and just, just even if it's like, it's all it takes is just take, making it Shiny. So it's really not that big of a hassle. Hopefully I can remember every week, because if I don't, then I've literally just given that away. Um, but <clears throat> hopefully if I have a um, self-aware enough opponent, they will know that. Um, but being shiny just gives it so that we ensure that our opponent does not know if we're running Aura Sphere or not. Kind of like how uh, on laddering, if you ever run like a female Greninja, they automatically know that it's Protean, because they, you know... If you run a male Greninja, then you know that they don't know if it's Battle Bond or if it's Protean. So it's like, or Torn, if you want to run that. But either way, pretty much that kind of mentality going into it. Raikou itself is pretty weird, to say the least. It gets an interesting amount of coverage. It gets Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, Volt Switch, so Momentum. Um, Thunderbolt, Aura Sphere, of course. Uh, extra sensory, and it gets a hidden power. So it gets Calm Mind, it gets uh, just the screens, I guess. It's kind of an odd mon, honestly. You don't really know what it's going to run. It's really the worst part about Raikou in order of your opponent, like the worst part, like not the bad parts about Raikou. Raikou isn't that, mo isn't that diverse. It doesn't have that great of a physical attack, so you can utilize it, but not the best, not really well advised in my opinion. But... Um, at the same time, it's fast, 115 base speed, uh, pretty good special attacks that in 115 as well, and really the hardest part to decipher about Raikou is its item, because you can run something like Specs, you can run Assault Vest, you can run, uh, Leftovers, you can run, I don't know if I said Life Orb yet, you can run E-Belt, just so many options with Raikou, and of course Z-Move too, because as you can see, there is a Z-Move, um, and with its limited coverage, those being Z moves would be very helpful, honestly, because having Fight EMZ or Sphere, having Savage Spit Out Signal Beam, or Sh Ghost EM or what is it, Never Ending Nightmare, or even Electrium Z itself would be great to have, because having those moves just means Raikou is going to be hitting that much harder with its attacks. And again, it doesn't necessarily need an item to function. It, you know, it doesn't rely on it. Of course, it. It helps, but, you know, it doesn't get that much power, so yes, an item would be nice, but it doesn't need it. So, you know, I, like, having, like, a, um, Life Orb Raikou isn't going to make, it may make the difference, but in the long run, having Life Orb in, like, say, Leftovers or something, or Assault Vest, isn't going to make the hugest difference in the world. So, 
Anyway, uh, that's really all I can say about Raikou. Not the most diverse, but it has its diversities. Anyway, I'm just going to jump right into it. Empoleon, uh, as you can see, we already have uh, Dragonite, so that is a 4 times weakness to Ice. We kind of covered our ground type weakness with uh, Dragonite and Raikou, but didn't really have the Ice type resist that we needed. Uh, Raikou does not isn't resistant to Ice, so um, kind of helpful to get Empoleon because it 4 times resists Ice. Um, looking back at the draft, um, I was really scared someone would pick this thing up because I really don't, this thing's so unpredictable when it's going to be drafted because it's like, it doesn't get recovery, but it's a good defogger and when people start realizing that they don't have hazard control, they really start wanting, look, uh, honing in on Napoleon and I wanted to kind of pick it up before people could do that. Um, I don't know if I sniped anyone, no one seems to be upset. Honestly, with a lot of these picks, I don't really know if I sniped anyone because a lot of people were kind of keeping those things to themselves. But when it comes to Empoleon, um, Water Steel is a great typing. Having hazard removal is definitely very pivotal um, with multi-scale on Dragonite so that that's not broken. Um, and it's one of the best hazard removals, in my opinion, because you can come in on Stealth Rocks, which is the thing that plagues Dragonite most, and it resists it, can take a hit, and can defog. So that's what's great. Um, has access to a few good moves like Knock Off, <clears throat> Ice Beam, Scald, um, a lot of coverage, not going to go through them all, but it gets interesting amounts of coverage. It gets Rocks, uh, Roar Out Your Opponent, Knock Off, like I, I don't, I think I already said that, but honestly, Empoleon has the support it needs. It is unfortunately pretty slow, which is unfortunate, but, you know, that's kind of comes with wolves and it also gets it doesn't get any recovery uh outside of leftovers and aqua ring i guess um maybe z move if i want to z move french or z franchise whatever it's called but i don't think i'll do that i it's not having recovery isn't the end of the world because yes you're getting whittled down but leftovers does help out uh quite a bit and honestly, Empoleon's just so bulky. It doesn't really need it. And honestly, it's really just there for resisting ice. Um, so, there's that. Anyway, uh, moving on. This next mon, I wasn't sure it was going to last. And honestly, I didn't really care if it did or not. I was kind of just, like, wanted to use it. And I was like, you know what? Why not? It's, it's powerful. It's fast. I wanted it. Mega Pidgeot, a.k.a. Katrina. Also, the Empoleon's name was Club Penguin. Oh, rest in peace, by the way. Um, Mega Pidgeot, very not diverse at all. It, it doesn't have much of a diversity. But, 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 Katrina, the Mega Pidgeot, is called Katrina for a reason. Because the only move you will be spamming is Heat Hurricane. I almost said Heat Wave. Uh, Hurricane. Because Hurricane like Hurricane Katrina, just devastates everything that it touches. Um, Bird Spam is just great. It Because, you know, you see things like Rock Type. What resists flying? Seal and Rock. What is Steel Weak to? Heat Wave. What is Rock Weak to? Ground. What can I run? HP Ground. Um, or Water. Or really any move. Um, a Hidden Power. You can run a Hidden Power. So that's what I'm really all I'm going to say. Um, its special attack is pretty good. Its speed is amazing because it's 121, barely outpacing that 120 speed tier, which can come in so much handy. Really, the only thing that plagues this thing is Scarfers, which can be annoying because, you know, you have a Scarfer and it's like, oh, can't run a Scarf on Mega Pidgeot. But that's all right because No Guard makes its thing so it can always hit Hurricanes, always hits Heat Waves. Oh, it makes it so your opponent will always hit those moves. But... At the same time, um, you know, you're really going to hit hard with your Hurricanes. And it gets momentum in U-turn, it gets hazard clearing and defog, and it gets roost, and it gets really any move, like, or a lot of support moves. Like, a lot of people don't know this Mon actually gets some pretty decent support moves. It gets Whirlwind, Tailwind, uh, Screens, Priority, and Quick Attack. So it's like... You can run moves. It gets Ominous Wind, which is like, huh? Ominous Wind? Uh, which I find cool. I, I, I like how it gets Ominous Wind. I don't think I'll ever run it. 
um, even with ghost types running around, because I'm pretty sure that Hurricane will probably hit harder anyway, but maybe if there's a four times ghost, uh, move, like a, maybe if I can, uh, kill something with Ominous Wind, I can't hit with Hurricane, I don't know. Uh, other than that, it just gets, like, you don't know what that fourth or third move slot's gonna be, because yes, Hurricane and Heat Wave are pretty given, um, those are usually going to be run unless I'm running like a physical Mega Pidgeot or something. I don't know. Um, but you don't know what those last two move slots are going to be. You may think it may be U-turn because like, oh, why wouldn't he have momentum? But then it's like, oh, it's going to be a hidden power. Because then you can't assume because, you know, maybe momentum would be good. So you don't want to switch into something because you may think that he might or I might just like you turn out into something, or I could go for a hidden power and then just knock out whatever you're in. Like, maybe it's like Land or Therian. Maybe I can't knock it out with a Hurricane. I just go for HP Eisen. It's like, boom, down for the count. So it's like, huh, what do I want to do? Do I want to go for the U-turn? Do I want to go stay in? It's like, it kind of makes you think a little bit. Um, Roost or Defog could be great tech. Uh, Tailwind as well, because my team isn't the fastest in the world, so that could be really cool. Tailwind and U-Turn is really nice. Uh, all around, it's not the bulkiest mon. It isn't the most versatile mon, but it definitely is a scary mon. So, you really have to pre prep for Mega Pidgeot, uh, and it really is just tears holes in teams. Bird Spam is just great, and I love it. Now, another mon that I was really worried that would be taken, but honestly wasn't really concerned if it did... I wanted to use it, but if it got taken, there were other options because it's kind of just a filler mon that kind of fills any role. Now, if you already could have guessed it by now, it's still Volley. Now, I couldn't find a Dream World Sprite, so that's why it's in its normal sprite. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I could find a Dream World Sprite, but it was so small that I it just was an awful quality. So I just put its normal sprite. And it's also my Z-Move user. So Morpheus the Sil Volley, um, that is actually... I like the name because it's derived from Greek mythology, and Morpheus, I believe, was a the god of sleep, and would come to dreamers in their sleep and could morph into any form. And that's kind of like how dreams were created, because he would morph into any kind of type, or not type, but any per thing, any person, anything, just anything, and it would come to you in your dreams in that form. So that's what's cool about Sovali, because... In this season, you can use any plate or any memory, I should say. Which makes Sovali really hard to prep for, especially since in the team preview, you don't know what this thing is going to be. Um, because in team preview, all you see is Sovali. You don't see if it's Sovali, um, Sovali Bug, Dark, Dragon, Electric Fairy, Fighting, and just any of the Sovalis. You don't know what it's going to be. Uh, which is really unfortunate because, or fortunate for the other, unfortunate for the other person because I, it's fortunate for me because I know what it is and they don't. So they may think, well, Fairy Sovali destroys my team or maybe Dragon Sovali destroys my team, but it's like, well, I didn't bring that and they think it is and they can't really prep for an individual Sovali because there's so many sets you can run with Sovali and Z-Move makes it even better because yes, I'll be in the normal type, of course, but, uh, Z-Parting Shot. That's a move, or that's definitely the real reason why I gave it my Z move. Um, other than that, it gets a good amount of coverage. It's pretty balanced. It gets 95 in each stat. Isn't as good as 100 in each stat, but it's good enough. I wish the memories gave it a boost to its stats, but that's all right. It's not the end of the world. Um, but really, so volley is so hard to prep for because your opponent doesn't know what it's going to be. Um, they could run, like, Fighting Coverage, but what if I bring a Fairy Silvoli, or what if I bring a Psychic Silvoli, or just something that resists fighting? Because, like, that's not that hard to do. Um, yeah. So, it's, like, kind of like, do I bring a Normal Silvoli? It's kind of hard for me, too, because I'm like, do I bring a Normal Silvoli, or do I bring a Memory? But, you know, I have the upper hand, because they're trying to predict what I have, and I'm just trying to predict to see if they know what I have. And that's a lot easier to do than predicting what your opponent has because it's like, I don't want to overthink it, but you look at your opponent, you wonder if they have that mod. If they don't, you're wrong, and then I just obliterate you. I mean, so Wally's going to obliterate you, but you get what I mean. It's definitely, 
And it gets momentum, too. It gets U-turn and parting shot, which is sweet. I love that, because you can lower your opponent's attack and special attack, or you can U-turn. And it's a fast parting shot user, too. I was considering bring, getting Pangoro um, for parting shot, but I decided so volley was probably the better option. So there's that. And in general, it's honestly just a really diverse mon. I'm really glad we scooped it up. Uh, I was thinking about other mons, you know, maybe like a fairy type that wasn't scooped up, or maybe like a bug type. I wasn't really sure. I would have probably decided what was left in B tier and kind of just decided off of there and kind of something that fit my draft plan. But luckily it wasn't, so we have Silvali, and now you guys are screwed because, or my opponents are screwed because they don't know what I'm going to bring, and that's just something I like having. Um, Honestly, kind of regretting this. Uh, franchise. It is my franchise, and it's going to be Delmi's. Kind of regretting it, honestly, just because I had a really early C1 pick, so I could have easily just picked up something fine. Like, I could have picked up something, but I, I got Delmi's. Uh, not bad. Not a bad pick at all, at all. I'm not mad about franchising it. I'm just mad about pick franchising it in the place I did. Um, I should have probably franchised something like Mega or Lander Asterian, or not Lander Asterian, Lander Incarnate, because that thing was a steal in B3, but that's alright, because we got Delmi's. Now, Delmi's isn't bad. It's sh at all. You know what? I'm going to stop saying it's bad. Delmi's is not bad. It's just the fact that I franchised it in the pick that I did, allowing it so that I couldn't get my next C2 pick very easily, because it's like, well, I have to go all this way to get back around from, like, 7th in C1 to, like, 13th in C2. So it's like, I had to wait, like, tw about, like, 20-something picks. Either way, it was a long wait, and Delmi's was worth it, though. I think Delmi's was worth it, just because from last season, you could tell Delmi's put in the work. It was a great physical attacker, great hazard remover. Honestly, it just... Great everything does. It doesn't have switch-ins. That's the main thing. It does not have switch-ins. And that's a really big deal because if you do not have switch-ins, that's a problem. That is a problem. Um, yeah. So, Delmi's, unfortunately, maybe have gotten too early, but I know I took a lot of people's picks by picking this mon. So, I'm not mad about picking it. I'm kind of just like, well, yeah. So I don't really have much to say. I kind of drafted it last season. It's powerful. That's all I can really say. It doesn't have switch-ins. Earthquake, Anchor Shot, uh, Power Whip, Rapid Spin, uh, Shadow Claw. Just in those, just generally is... Just a really powerful mon with very little switch-ins. Very bulky. Doesn't even need an offensive item in order to help it prevail. Can even be run special too, aka if you uh, my losers bracket match where I run a specs domi. So anyway, that's domi's for you. But moving on for, to our C2 pick. Now this uh, pick has a little bit of backstory. Uh, Tupac this crafty. Now, originally, I was going to pick Zorwark, but Abdepi decided to scoop that up pretty early C2 um, because he just had an early C2 pick. Um, but I'm not mad about this pick because Scrafty is... I was actually debating getting Scrafty or Zorwark, and I actually made, had my decision made for me. Zorwark is much faster. I get that. But you look at Scrafty, it gets access to Dragon Dance to boost its speed, bulk up, Three amazing abilities, Shredskin, Moxie, and Intimidate. You may be like Shredskin, um, but you can rest. That's a move. Um, what else? Uh, just status in general, because Toxic, I could run Shredskin, so that's a thing. Uh, of course, Intimidate is amazing, because you can get that you know, Intimidate drop. Moxie, after you've gotten a D-Dance up, that can be GG. Um... <clears throat> A vast array of coverage, Super Fang, Thunder, all the elemental punches, just gets so much coverage, high jump kick, uh, Poison Jab for fairies, isn't as good as Gunk Shot on Pangoro, in general is just, has less attack power than Pangoro, but is much, much more bulky, and honestly, it's just, in my opinion, the better pick, because, you know, it just has 
much more bulk, much like better ways to boost its, you know, attack and speed. Honestly, Scrafty is a great pick. I'm so glad we chose it. It's not as offensively present as other mons would be, but I'm really glad that we are able to scoop it up just because it has so many ways of just dealing with your opponent. It's so hard to predict. That's what's great about my team is it's so hard to predict what is going to be brought because there's so many ways you can run a lot of different mons on this team. So anyway, that's going to be Scrafty. And with that being said, let's move forward with our next pick. So this pick was a little bit of hard to choose because there were a lot of different mods I could have chosen. I ended up picking Seismitoad, aka Cystic Fibrosis. Um, so it's kind of hard to see, that's why I said the name. Um, but Seismitoad, I decided on Seismitoad because I wanted more hazards. I didn't have much hazards, my only form of hazards were Empoleon up at this point. And I also wanted a ground type. Now, another mod that filled that position was Swampert. However, at this point, I already had a starter, and I didn't want another one because I was planning on choosing another starter, as you'll see in a little bit. Um, so I didn't want three starters because I just feel, I just don't like that because, I don't know, if you st overflow with starters, it kind of feels like a really primitive team, like something you would make when you were, like, eight. So it's, like, why I don't really want to do that. Seismitoad... While not as diverse as Swampert, I'm, gl I'm glad I chose it because it does have access to Water Absorb, Swift Swim, and Poison Touch. All much better abilities than Torn and Damp from um, Swampert. Now, they can be useful, but honestly, it has better abilities. It's faster. It isn't as offensive, but it is faster. has a little bit better HP stat with worse defenses, but... Honestly, the defenses don't really matter since we already have good all-around defensive Pokemon. Having more HP is much better for me at this point, just because having HP is just good. Because if we look at our team before, we don't have the best HP stats in the world. You know, we have um, 91 with Dragonite, 90. Like, we have a lot of mediocre HP stats, but nothing, like, out there. I, I wanted better HP mons like Seismitoad um, to kind of carry um, more of a bulky team. It does get Drain Punch, so it gets Recovery. Uh, of course, you can run Leftovers. Uh, gets, honestly, a good amount of coverage. It gets Rocks, of course. Like I said, Hazards are nice. Uh, knock Off, Earth Power, and Earthquake. And what's great about Seismitoad is while it, it can be run defensively, you can also run it as a Sweeper, which is really cool. And a lot of its moves, it gets two variants of. So you can run maybe like, you know, Earth Power, Earthquake, Hydro Pump, Waterfall, or Ice Punch. doesn't get Ice Beam, unfortunately, but a lot of its moves, it gets variations of. So, you know, it gets um, good on both sides. And it's kind of hard to predict if they're going to run, like, kind of a Scald, maybe Scald and Earthquake, or maybe, like, Scald and Earth Power. It's like, what is it going to run? What is it going to run? Uh, and it has good attack and special attack, too. I was also considering getting, like, Quagsire or Gastrodon from D2 if uh, Seismitoad and Swampert were taken, but luckily it lasted. I didn't think it would be taken. Seismitoad isn't the most popular, but I was just glad that we were able to scoop it up. So, Seismitoad, there we go. And Cystic Fibrosis is a pretty good name, considering it looks like it has very painful cysts all over its body. So, anyway, like I was saying, um, starter. Uh, I was originally going to pick this thing D2, because I was going to pick Mesprit, but Jatun and the Vancouver Dual Ducks decided to take that um, second pick of D1. Can't blame them. Mesprit's a great Pokemon. Um, and I really wanted it for my team, but I decided uh, I couldn't get... Well, I decided I couldn't get that, so I just decided, you know what, we're going to go with this thing. Hopefully, no, uh, just because I didn't want anyone taking it. There were other fire types in the tier. For those of you who don't know, it is Antonio D1 Typhlosion. Uh, Typhlosion, really, really underrated in draft league format. Um, Rylize of the San Diego Wild Chargers were, used it, I want to say, season 5, I want to say. And it put in work. This thing is hard, hard, hard to prep for. Gives us a fire immunity as well. Um, doesn't help us at all other than Delmi's. But, you know, that could come in huge handy because, you know, maybe there's a really good fire type that just can't spam fire moves. That's just really fun to have because, yes, our team 
does have no, not too many fire uh, weaknesses, but it does have, uh, doesn't have too many fire immunities, is really what I'm saying. Other than like, or not immunities, but weaknesses. You know, we have Seismitoad, but honestly, I'm just glad that we have Typhlosion because we can kind of eat those um, fire-type hits. And we don't even need to run Flash Fire, you know? Um, <clears throat> Blaze can be run as well. There's just a lot of ways you can run Typhlosion. And it can be run physical. It does have a good physical attack. It has a amazing, amazing special attack with an amazing speed. And one of, well, amazing. Um, its speed tier is fine. 100 is a pretty good speed tier to be in. At this point, we didn't really have any 100 base speed tier Pokemon, so that's good to have. Uh, I was considering getting Pyroar, considering getting, um, what else? Uh, Magmortar? But Pyroar, first off, is not that versatile, doesn't have that great of a special attack, or not as good as I should say as um, Typhlosion. It did get Flare Blitz this gen, which is really cool. And I was considering picking it up, but I, I just thought Typhlosion fit better and kind of gave us another uh, less weakness to fighting. I didn't really have the biggest fighting type weakness in the world, but, you know, still nice that we didn't add one. And just just nice to have another uh, fire um, type on the squad, or another fire type. Just not another normal type, and Magmortar was kind of slow for me. I could have picked it, but 83 base speed is just not that great. It's... A weird speed tier to be honest it is more versatile uh, it has better special attack it's just a lot slower and honestly I just wanted Typhlosion and honestly Typhlosion in my opinion hits harder because of the move eruption you're gonna be staying in you're gonna be firing off those eruptions and it's going to be super devastating to your opponent's team because if they don't have a check to that that's going to be really difficult to deal with um, and even eruption you know like, yes, maybe, you know, there's rocks on the field, maybe there's that, but even Lava Plume, like, you run Specs, you run Choice Scarf, you can run Life Orb, there's so many ways to run it, and it gets the coverage it needs. Um, you know, it's not great coverage, you know, it gets um, limited, to say the least, it gets, you know, Extrasensory, Eruption, Fire Blast, Lava Plume, uh, Focus Blast... Um, but it also gets that physical coverage, which you really need to watch out for, because if you don't, then it's like, huh. And it also gets burn up, which in my opinion, it's just, uh, yeah, just a great move. And one that I think can be utilized quite well. So there's that. It, it gets burn up. That's all I need to say. Uh, I think it's one of two, I think. Burn Up, I think only Arcanine and Typhlosion get that, and Moltres, apparently. But, um, yeah, so Typhlosion, pretty cool mon, in my opinion. Maybe shouldn't have picked D2, and I, that comes to bite me in the butt. But, Typhlosion, for now, is a great mon. Now, next up, we have Hecus the Muck. Now, I, you may notice that this is actually an E-pick. I decided to pick this thing up D2. Two, because of the fact that I honestly was going to go for Garbodor, and I literally realized it a pick after I picked Typhlosion. I was like, why did I not choose Garbodor? Garbodor had so much more potential than Muck. Another Hazard Setter um, could have easily been a D2 pick, but um, or D1 pick, and then Typhlosion is the D2. But unfortunately... Um, <clears throat> and Versify, or I think it was someone else that drafted for him, but, and the, um, Miami Heatmore decided to pick it up the turn before us, so that kind of put me in a predicament. I was going to choose Muck originally, but I realized that I could have gotten Garbodor, um, but then we didn't. So, now, okay, I will say, Muck is not a bad Pokemon. We used Muck Alola last season, literally the exact same spot, so kind of a coincidence that we got Muck. Um, but Muck in itself is not a bad pick. Muck is a good pick because it gets priority in Shadow Sneak, it gets recovery in Pain Split, gets Memento for um, Momentum, if you really want to use that. Uh, memento, Memento, uh, uh, okay, whatever. Uh, it's very bulky, has good HP, good defenses, and is pretty powerful. It honestly is not a bad pick. It gets good 
moves. It's co has good coverage. So honestly, this is not a bad pick. It's just the fact that I could have gotten Garbodor and I didn't, and it was just a much better pick because it also got Pain Split. It got Drain Punch as well. It got Hazards. And while it didn't have as good of an HP stat, it was still mm, debatably the better mod. Maybe not. I don't know. Honestly, it didn't really screw up my entire picks, but I think not having Masperate was kind of annoying because, you know, there's that. But anyway, uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, E1, I decided to get Mr. Mime. Pennywise, love the name. I... The It movie, or It TV show, or whatever it's called, pretty bad, honestly, because It is just not that great. But Tim Curry in that movie is so funny. If you've ever seen It, that's just props to you. It's a great movie. I love it. Great in a way that it's funny. It has a little bit of good suspense, but really only in the first part. But this is a movie view review, and we really need to speed this up. But either way, Mr. Mind, Pennywise. Do I like this thing? Not really. It's uh, interesting, to say the least. It gets Trick Room. Gets Trick Room, so maybe. It does a good special defense. I will say that. It has very good special defense. Pretty bad HP, so not really goes going that well with it. But it gets great coverage. It gets Nasty Plot. I don't regret picking it E1. We need a Psychic type. We need a Fairy type. Why not get Mr. Mime? I was going to actually go Behem. And I really kind of regret doing that just because I love, love, love Behem. But um, Pennywise the Mr. Mime is just the faster Mon. It's the better Mon in general. Gives us more speed. Gives us more a little bit more bulk in general. Because you look at Behem and you see it has okay defenses. But like we just have that 120 base special attack defense. And it's like it hits harder. But it also... I don't know. It's it's slower, which we really didn't need many more slow mods. We had enough, honestly. Uh, dual screens, uh, Thunderbolt, Trick. Honestly, it just gets a lot of great coverage moves. Energy Ball. like It gets moves. It, it gets the moves that it needs. It gets a lot of good moves. It even gets Calm Mind. So that's a thing. Dazzling Gleam. Wish it got Moonblast, but it doesn't. So, honestly, Pennywise is a good mod. It's just like... Honestly, our draft, like, e our e-picks are not bad. Like, you see some of the other teams, and you see their e-picks, it's like, eh, those are okay, that's okay, you know, that's all right, you know. Uh, but it's like, do, the, these picks aren't bad. Th that's not a bad pick whatsoever. I mean, I, I say bad. They're not bad. They're just like, I feel like mine was just, a snag. I, I actually like Mr. Mime. It, it was uh, kind of a good mod to pick up. So, anyway, uh, Mr. Mime, what more can I say? It's a pretty decent special attacker. Can get sweeps in. Uh, Entertainment, Entertainment showed us that last season. But finally, I'm really surprised I got this mod. Uh, I had a backup being Pinsir, but we didn't need it. I originally wanted Aurorus. I'll be honest with you. I wanted Aurorus. But unfortunately, or luckily for us, or unfortunately, it got sniped. But luckily for us, we get to bring back the one, the only, Bob, but not Bob. It's a new Mon because we didn't franchise it, so therefore it's a different Mon. Um, Crustle. Pepe the Crustle. It has hazards. That's, um, honestly, I got Crustle mostly because we need a Rock type, because we didn't have Aurora, so we need a Bug type. Uh, it provides good speed, good defense too, which is key because we didn't really have too many defensive mods. We had a lot of special defense, not too many defense, but gives us a solid defensive mod. And honestly, is a really awesome pick. I like Crustle quite a bit. I don't really like picking for my old drafts. I kind of like getting a new, kind of improved draft. But nevertheless, it is still a really, really awesome um, pick. To pick up, especially E2. I picked this thing up D1 last season, and I got it E2. In a season where F tier wasn't a thing. Um, yeah, so we get this as our last pick. So 
just goes to show that you can get some pretty cool mons. And just to show you what was picked before it, Bufalant, Regice, Throw, Altaria, Matang, and then I get Crustle. And then Volbeat was picked after. It's like, okay. Um, all right, all righty then. And yeah, so not like I'm upset with Crustle because it gets spikes, it's rocks, it gets shell smash, and we didn't really utilize it last season. So I think it's kind of time for Pepe, not Bob, to get redemption. Bob's retired. He was kind of old when he got into the game. Pepe's new. Pepe's like Pepe's right fresh off the block. He's ready to cut up some people. He's he's ready to cut some people up. But anyway, this. It's already be gone on for like 40 minutes. So I think we're going to end it right here. So that's not the right... Okay, sorry. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm pretty happy with this draft, personally. Honestly, it's just pretty okay draft in general. A lot of big threats. Like, honestly, there aren't too many bad teams. Like there, there's a few, there's a few, I'm not going to name them because I don't want to, um, I just don't want to name names. That's just not nice. But honestly, the teams are looking fire. I am excited for the season. There's a lot of big threats out there, especially with a lot of the recent, re recently released megas. I am so sorry. Sorry. Uh, like Mega Manectric, Mega Heracross. Uh, what else was picked up? Mega Houndoom, I think, was another one picked up. Mega Obama Snow, uh, Krakenation, and Mega Obama Snow. That's gonna be sweet. Uh, can't wait to face him a week, whatever it is. I don't really know. I just know that we face him since we're in the same division. Honestly, I'm really, really looking forward to the season. Uh, our team, it's interesting, to say the least, but I think we can roll with it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and that'll be it. So, see you later. Bye.